Deep in the Trincheira indigenous reserve in the Brazilian Amazon, Anna's motorboat winds through a maze of streams and dense rainforest that halts on the riverbank, and Anna and her guides get out and head toward a desolate landscape. Just meters into the jungle, the emerald canopy gives way to a vast stretch of felled forest and shard shrubs. This stretch of land was raised just a few months ago. Alerted by indigenous residents, Brazilian federal police attempted to intervene, but the invaders returned, setting it ablaze. This isn't an isolated event. It's happening across the Autazes region, where we have come to tell the story behind the disappearance of this part of the Amazon rainforest. I'm Romika Sanino, and this is Chasing Deforestation, a series that explores the world's most threatened forests through satellite data and reporters on the ground. Don't forget to subscribe to Mongave to get notifications about our latest videos. Located in the heart of state of Amazonas, Autaces is a municipality in Brazil that is six times the size of Rio de Janeiro. This corner of the jungle is so remote that the easiest way to move around the area is through the tributaries connecting with the Amazon River. In fact, its name, Autaces, comes from the Autaces Azul and Autaces Medium rivers, which penetrate and cut the municipality from north to south. Autaces is home to the indigenous Mura people. They live in the Trincheira Indigenous Reserve, which spans 1,835 hectares across the municipality of Autaces. Rivers and streams crisscross the forest landscape, swelling during the rainy season to form a maze of flat plains. Some 34 indigenous villages dot the riverbank where the Mura people survive by fishing, hunting, and growing subsistence crops. Manaus is Autaces' closest large city and the capital of Amazonas state, which is also laced by navigable waterways and lacks accessible roads. For the first four centuries following the Europeans' arrival in the New World, the native populations of the Amazon basin lived practically in isolation. The area was vast and impenetrable. But things changed as the 19th century drew to a close and the Industrial Revolution intensified. Interest in venturing to the Amazon rainforest was varied. Who knew what resources were to be found? The gold rush had already subsided, but another resource motivated a new wave of colonization of the area. In tropical regions, natural rubber, also known as tree gum, comes from the rubber tree. A white liquid called latex is extracted from the tree's stem and then processed to make rubber. What makes rubber great? It's a very strong material that is exceptionally flexible. We find rubber in many things we use daily, like clothes, toys, tires, and some gum brands. There was a massive rubber boom in Europe and North America during the late 1800s. And with the boom came expansion of trade routes, including a railroad line to move rubber harvests to ports. The Madeira Mamore Railroad was inaugurated in 1912. Created by the governments of Bolivia and Brazil, this route allowed the rubber trade to go from the heart of the Amazon to the Atlantic Ocean, and from there straight to the United States and Europe. This led to the development of cities, such as Manaus. After years of prosperity, the Brazilian rubber industry slowly began to die. Someone managed to smuggle rubber seeds to England, hidden in banana leaves that were used to start rubber plantations in Britain's Southeast Asian colonies. By the 1930s, the railroad was only partially in service, and by 1972, it was abandoned completely. The economy of Manaus and the wider Amazonas state was once reliant almost entirely upon rubber. Today, the region has turned into a major industrial and agricultural center. Roads play a key role in reaching and bringing resources to previously isolated places, such as Autaces. Deforestation in the region is skyrocketing. By November 2021, more than 48,600 deforestation alerts had been recorded in Autaces primary forest, according to satellite data from the University of Maryland. This represents a jump of more than 72% over the same period in 2020. Indigenous leaders say the clearing is now encroaching on the 18 indigenous reserves scattered across Autaces, some of which are still awaiting full demarcation. Mongabe contributor Anna Yonova investigated what's happening in Autaces. Essentially, we saw that there was just a lot of deforestation activity um, just south of the Amazon River in Amazonas State. And once we kind of zoomed in, 
to this area, I noticed that a lot of this uh, deforestation and, um, and burning was happening within one municipality, which happened to also just have a cluster of indigenous territories. So as soon as you arrive in Altaz, it's, uh, it's really obvious that cattle is really, really um, huge there. It, there's markers of it everywhere you go. But really, I wanted to, to see what was happening in those um, areas that were more remote, deeper into the forest. Um, and that's how we set out um, kind of from Altazas into some of the neighboring indigenous territories. And once we got, got there, especially in one of them, um, the Mura people took us to this um, territory called uh, Trinchera. And we just saw shocking levels of devastation, just, um, you know, in the middle of an indigenous protected territory that is supposed to be off limits to people. Anna spoke with Sousa Diaz Alves, a resident of the indigenous village of Trincheira, about what's happening. Desde o tempo que eu vivi nesse trincheira, esse local aqui era virgem, né? Como a gente chama as matas, né? Quando ela tem a sua a sua natureza sem mexer, sem ser tocada. Eu fico praticamente sem palavras com a revolta que fica dentro de mim. So the Mura people are um, are very connected to their water sources and um, to their their villages. They survive by um, hunting, fishing, planting small scale crops on their on their territories, and increasingly the water sources are being polluted, the fish are not as plentiful, um, their land is not, um, is not suitable for growing crops. As we've seen, the forest is rapidly giving way to pasture. The region is increasingly occupied by an exotic species. What are all these water buffalo doing here? Introduced by ranchers in the area, water buffalo thrive in the region's unique landscape of flat plain forests. They can swim across swampy patches to find new areas to graze, perfect for audaces. Over the last decade, ranchers have invested heavily in water buffalo. The animals produce milk, meat, and leather, and can also be used for tilling and for transportation. Yeah, so Altas is, has a long history of ranching, so this isn't something that's happened overnight, but increasingly in recent years, um, a lot of these ranchers are shifting to water buffaloes because they are seeking better returns on their investment. It's a larger animal. A lot of the times um, it commands a premium, um, milk products and, and um, the meat from, uh, from buffaloes rather than, than cows. However, indigenous residents say they haven't seen any benefits from this new industry. They say the buffalo ranches surround their villages and that in some cases are even invading their territories, with the livestock destroying their subsistence crops. É porque o búfalo ele é ele é, ele é selvagem, né? Ele não respeita quase quase coisas. Por exemplo, se faltar comida para ele, pasto, ele vai vai invadir, por exemplo, as nossas roça, onde tem roça. Então, a nossa preocupação mais é essa porque ele não respeita quase cerca, né? Se corrado, se ele tiver com fome, ele mete o peito na água e vai. Water buffalo are also polluting the water. The streams they use to bathe, cook and fish have turned a murky brown. These waterways are the only source of drinking water in the village. Now, residents must treat the water with drops of bleach before they can safely drink it. The residents blame the three large ranches that surround their 769 hectare reserve. In the nearby village of Sao Feliz, indigenous residents report that they regularly see buffalo feces and even electric cattle fencing in the river. O nosso maior anseio é isso, né? Trazer o jovem, né, da daquela aldeia que não teve oportunidade, né, muita vez até de estudar por motivos, né, próprios deles mesmo, mas já agora está agregando, né? Indigenous people warn that as buffalo ranching closes in on their territories, the invasions threaten the survival of the 18,000 Mura people who call this region home. The ranching industry in Amazonas remains modest compared to neighboring Mato Grosso state, Brazil's cattle ranching heartland. But as the cattle frenzy spills over, production is surging in places like Audaces. 
the municipality is home to some 80,000 head of cattle, near twice the number of people. When you arrive in Autases, you are greeted by a sign that reads, Land of Milk. Local authorities have embraced cattle ranching and have made their goal to expand milk, cheese and meat production. The expansion of buffalo ranching has only deepened the Moore's decades-long struggle for land and rights. Once occupying vast swaths of the region's maze of forest, flat plains and rivers, the Mura are now scattered across dozens of indigenous reserves, some small as a few hectares and many not yet fully demarcated. Farmers and ranchers soon moved into the stretches between the various Mura territories, raising the forest and transforming the land into pasture. What this meant for the villages is that they, they became kind of encircled by this um, this activity that is actually not supposed to be happening so close to their their villages and their territories. But um, it's obviously exploded in the last um, decade or two. Recently, the scramble for land in Autases has intensified on the back of plans to open a potash mine in the municipality, which would supply soy production with fertilizer. There's a big uh, scheme that is planned, which would construct a potash mine in the in the town, and uh, it has uh, faced a lot of uh, setbacks because. Uh, the developers behind the project, although the project is, has support from um, authorities and lawmakers, it hasn't really um, been well received by environmentalists and human rights groups. Although the project remains frozen after a court ruled the mining company had failed to consult the Mura people, the plans have boosted speculative land sales. There's been a lot of land speculation, even, even without the project being underway yet. Um, so there's been a lot of people that have been selling their, their land, um, any land that they own near the, the project site, and um, not even waiting for approval. They're just kind of uh, speculating that this land will become really valuable. Um, there will be kind of, uh, you know, open um, uh, permissioning to, to exploit this land. Federal plans to open vast stretches of the Amazon basin to natural gas exploration have also set land speculation. However, the plans have been marred by controversy as public prosecutors argue some of the blocks earmarked for exploration overlap with indigenous territories awaiting demarcation. This destruction has overtaken many indigenous territories, which are supposed to be off limits to commercial exploitation. According to satellite imagery, the Miguel Josefa Indigenous Reserve, another Mura territory in Autases, is thoroughly pockmarked by clearings. In the Padre Indigenous Reserve, the sweep of deforestation is advancing from north to south. Indigenous leaders say the area is now plagued by illegal logging, drug trafficking and land grabbing. Once the forest has been opened up, they say, agriculture will likely follow. It has been particularly complicated with uh, in the last few years with the, with the current government because essentially with all of these bills on the table um, that are kind of promising to allow mining and agriculture on indigenous lands to reduce the, the boundaries of protected regions and protected parks, these people are, that are invading these territories are betting that at one point their activities will be legalized. When I went to this uh, region increasingly over and over again, I just heard kind of this sentiment from the Mura that what we really need is for this, uh, this region to be turned into one kind of unified territory that is under federal protection and where um, this kind of activity is not permitted. Amazon um, across Brazil is incredibly diverse and um, incredibly important ecologically, but um, this particular part of the Brazilian Amazon is actually one of the few regions that hasn't really been um, explored yet. So it is, uh, it's a shame, it has uh, a lot of, of wealth socially and um, ecologically that uh, is really at risk at the moment. If you enjoyed Chasing Deforestation and want to see more content like this, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time.